I'm Greg Flexman, longtime jump user. I do have a little bit of a scratchy throat today, so we'll see if that holds up. So today we're going to talk about visualization and exploration. This is a key part of these cycles of understanding where maybe you have a product, maybe this is a process you're monitoring. It generates data as a pro par portion of um, just out output of the process. Uh, from that, you can generate learnings and ideas that can influence how you build it the next time. So this continuous cycles is pretty key ID, idea to a lot of continuous improvement lean methodologies. JUMP can do a, a broad range of supporting activities here. Today, we're really just going to talk about data blending and cleanup, some exploration, exploration and visualization. Uh, but that does get a little bit into sharing and communicating results. And we will just touch on a few basic data analysis topics. This will not be a statistics-heavy discussion. This is going to be mainly visual. So if we were to take that analytics workflow and put it on this continuous improvement cycle, we would see that, you know, Jump can kind of pick up with helping with the data access that comes as the output of your process. Uh, blending and cleanup, visualization are all very early steps to generating ideas. So these are the topics we will focus on today. So we have a process we're going to be taking a look at that uh, we'll imagine we've got a pharmaceutical manufacturer of uh, drug tablets. There's a variety of process steps that uh, are tracked as part of this operation generating data. So as we come in, uh, we will start with an active pharmaceutical ingredient that is the entry point. These are uh, grouped into lots and the lot is kept together through the entire process. There's a milling step for which we know a numeric value of mill time, as well as a choice of screen size. The operators are allowed to uh, make elections. They've got three different screens they can use. There's a blending step for which we know the blend time and speed, as well as there's a variety of suppliers uh, providing input material to this process that is all joined in this blend step. There's a compression into the individual tablet shape. Uh, there's a force that's applied in that compression. And then there's a coding process, which has a number of variables as well as another supplier coming in for the coding that happens to be at some numeric velocity. So uh, all through this process, we have some awareness of the data that's coming in. Uh, and then there's a critical output dissolution. So these tablets need to uh, get through in the body to be absorbed in the right place. So they measure the dissolution and it should be greater than 70 minutes. So that's sort of the uh, basis of the process that we're starting with. So we're gonna go through the data blending and exploration and visualization portion today. So uh, data is prep for analysis. And maybe this process, uh, this process is not running great right now. We've got a lot of rejects. So maybe some, some of your colleagues know that you are adept at data. You've got some interesting tools. So they say, please, can you help us out in some way? Um, so what we're gonna do is we get this data table and we start to take a look at it. We notice it's 90 rows long. We've got 21 columns and we can scroll across and see these various columns. One of the first things that we want to do is uh, just start to get a sense of the data. It's really helpful to have the, uh, the um, column header graphs. This is a great feature that's coming in the last se several versions of Jump. And we can also do an analyze distribution and we can look at some of these uh, attributes, right? We'll just take a look at a few of these. If we were to look at lot acceptance, we know that 15% uh, of our lots are rejected, and we can see that the performance relative to the 70 threshold is not doing great. 
So one of the cool features about Jump is this dynamic linking where you can touch uh, any data anywhere. We could select rows manually, but we can also just touch them in any graph. And it's through this dynamic linking, we're able to see some of these relationships. So we can see uh, as we scroll across the header graphs, the various things that may contribute to rejects. Now, as we just scroll across these header graphs, we notice maybe there's a little bit of cleanup that needs to be done before we get into this. Uh, I'm not sure where this data came from. Perhaps it was hand keyed in or uh, some system that wasn't super reliable, but we notice that there's apparently some typos. So one of the early things we can do is we can right click on recode and we can say, you know, this, it looks like there were just some errors when these were keyed. So I'm going to manually select group and I'm going to choose to do this in place. We could do this in a new column if we didn't want to overwrite our data, but we're confident that these are typos. So we're going to recode in place. We see this similar issue with lactose supplier. So I'm going to do a recode. Now, if you do have many of these, it's very helpful. There's a great option in the, um, in the red triangle called group similar values that will do kind of what your eyes do and you can, this, it will suggest groupings for you. So if you have many of these, uh, it's really handy. And once you see if you like that, we're gonna do that in place and say recode. So we fixed that. Now, as we're looking at these distributions, there's really something funny going on in mill time. And let's, let's take a look at that. So if we look at this numerically, uh, we notice one value happens to be the first row has just this freakish value of 270, where everything else is much lower. Uh, if we were to zoom in, jumps very graphical here, so we can just zoom in on this distribu distribution and see, you know, it. that's, I really don't believe that that 270 is legit. We could say, uh, let's break this down to single units. I think that's a typo, so we will talk and uh, we asked the colleagues that supplied the data and they said, yes, it actually is an error. We do have a couple choices there and I wanna make sure folks are aware of that. We could elect to exclude this data. Uh, if we were looking at the relationship, I wanna just real quick uh, show some of these implications. So if we're looking at this relationship, and maybe we are uh, evaluating this, we can eyeball see this freakish point. If we were to fit a line to that, we could have some concern that this is pulling our line uh, in a direction we didn't want to go. We could hide and exclude this point such that when we re-execute this analysis, I'm going to set this to automatic recalc, and you'll notice that the uh, line is in a new place, but it's not using one data point. So hide and exclude is one option to clean up your data or you can just fix it. So we're gonna fix it, unexclude, toggle that and be rolling with our full 30 points. Okay, so some of the choices we, now we believe our data set is looking good. Uh, so now we, we want to start to analyze what is causing these rejects. 